Have you heard about Nightingale? With the arrival of so many amazing survival games this year, competition is fierce. Let's look at a few things that set Nightingale apart from the rest. First, in very brief introduction, in case you aren't familiar with it, Nightingale is a shared world survival crafting game in a gas lamp Victorian fantasy style. You set out as a realm walker to explore the Fey realms, alone or with friends. As you adventure through the fallen realms, you discover magical portals that can transport you to new realms. This is where we find the first and most unique aspect of Nightingale, portals and how it treats them. You can find portals out in the world and you can also develop the ability to build your own portals. Going through a portal takes you to a new realm. What's interesting is that you get to decide what kind of world, what kind of realm is gonna be there on the other side. Inflection Games is trying to give players the ability to have the experience that they want, giving us control of what it is that we wanna do at that time. And they do this by creating RNG realms that are designed by the player using realm cards. Realm cards are crafted by the player. There are three different types. There's the biome realm card, of which currently there are three biomes, forest, swamp, and desert. There are the major realm cards, which will change something major about the realm that you're going to. For example, if you wanna to go to a hunting realm. And the minor realm cards, adjust details about that biome. For example, if you are searching for resources and you don't want it to get dark while you're there looking for things, you can set it to be always day. If you want to go and do some extreme battles and get some more rare resources as drops from difficult mobs, then you can set the difficulty level higher for that. If you want good weather, if you want bad weather, and you can do combinations of all these different things to come up with unique realms. The possibilities are endless. We're gonna be starting out with a good amount of realm cards, dozens of them, and Inflection says that they do intend on continuing to add these and continuing to add these, and they're taking feedback from the community about what kinds of cards that you would like added. So all the times in games when I hear players saying, oh, I wish it had more of this, or I hit, wish it had less of that. I wish it would stay daytime because I just want to build. They're giving us the ability to control those kinds of things for ourselves and for our own play style, what our own goal is at that time. This seems like a real game changer to me. Second, I want to mention something about the multiplayer system. You can choose to play this game solo if you want to. You can choose to play it with friends. You're not required to play it with friends. I know there had been a little bit of confusion about that. But if you do choose to play it in multiplayer, at least at certain times, then it has certain benefits to it. For one, the game moms don't scale based on how many people are there. They are as hard as they are. And so an apex predator has the same level of difficulty if it's just you fighting them or if it's you and five of your friends fighting them. So if you wanna make things a bit easier on yourself, call in some friends to help take out a big guy. If you wanna make it harder on yourself, try and do it solo. So you can invite friends in to play with you in your realm, you can go to their realm, you can build and craft and survive together. However, because this game is hosted in the cloud, this not only means that you don't have to pay for a dedicated server because they're taking care of that for you, but if the host friend logs off, their friends can continue playing in their world and finish whatever project or adventure that y'all were working on. And because they're using Google servers, you can bet that there will be one close to you for good connectivity. A third thing I wanna mention is style. It has to be said, this game has style. I mean, just look at the absolute beauty of these graphics. The lighting, the details, the characters, the moms, the overall theme of the game as well. They've updated to the latest version of Unreal Engine, so it really takes the feel of the game to the next level. And these are not empty realms. They are densely packed with POIs, discoverable on the map, or things that you just stumble upon, puzzle games, dungeons, ruins, NPCs. 
As beautiful as it may look, though, keep in mind that there is danger lurking around the corner. Integrating gas lamp survival with this fantasy seems like a winning combination to me. I'm looking forward to digging deeper into Nightingale to unearth all of the particular features and details about how it works. And hopefully it will live up to the hype and my expectations. I know that the devs have been working closely with community members and trying to take in feedback during testing to incorporate what people really want. They do seem genuinely interested in staying focused on player experience. And that's always a good foundation to start with for a successful game, in my opinion. Nightingale will launch into early access on February 22nd on Steam and Epic. You can wishlist it now. The launch price will be $29.99 US, which is reasonable for this type of early access game. I'll be covering the game in detail, so if you're interested in Nightingale, please consider subscribing. Until next time, happy gaming!